Welcome back to another episode of What Are You Made Of with your boy, the unstoppable Mike Searock. I'm in the house today with Jared Bringhurst. I'm excited to introduce him. But before I do that, I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for your support of the What Are You Made Of podcast, my book, Rocket Fuel. I'm just so thankful to have all of you. And, uh, you know, if there's anything I can ever do, all you got to do is reach out to your boy, Searock. But become unstoppable, by the way. Go get that Rocket Fuel book at MikeSearock.com forward slash book, MikeSearock.com forward slash book. And today's guest, Jared, is a senior marketing director in the Miller Group and has a team of over 200 people across the United States, including Hawaii. In his new business, Jared is now on a mission to coach entrepreneurs and cure financial literacy throughout through education, along with people like Ed Milet, Chris Poliska, uh, uh, Ali Zamani, and Edwin, man, these names, man. Oreave. Oreave, among many <laughs> others. I apologize for not knowing who that is, so... Uh, man, a born and bred entrepreneur, Jared began like a lot of kids selling lemonade and cookies, then built a baseball card shop in his driveway. He has been a business owner officially recognized for 20 years in multiple industries from real estate, wholesale to retail stores. And most recently, he sold over 20 million in high efficiency windows. Man, you're all over the place, just like we were talking about offline. Jared, what's up, man? Yeah, what's up, man? You know, what's funny about saying I'm all over the place. I uh, February 3rd, I was looking at my text, right? You know who Dan Fleshman is by chance? Yeah, yeah. I looked at my text thread with Dan Fleischman and uh, I, I messaged him and I said, Hey, let's open a cards and coffee in Salt Lake city. That was February 3rd and April 3rd is our opening day. So, so hold on. So, uh, so, so wait a minute. So uh, business, uh, b- uh, baseball cards, like sports cards, sports cards, baseball, basketball, football, yeah. Pokemon, and, you know, and, and, and that whole shop. world. Yeah. It's exploding. He's got a store in LA. So when you just said that, I was, I was laughing to myself because even since I wrote that bio, I've got another business in the works. Yeah, that's sick, man. So so where's that going to be? Uh, downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. We're launching on the coolest date ever to launch a company, which is 4321. <laughs> gotcha. Is and then, well, I, I want to get into this question first before I get into details of that because I have so many questions for you on that. But let's yeah. ask the question like we always start the show with. What are you made of, Jared? Yeah, man, that's that's a good question. I've been thinking of. I think I think mostly what I'm made of is stories. I live my whole life inside of, and I've really, really developed this muscle of when I'm going through really, really, really hard times. The thing that gives me the grit, the persistence, and I've been through some really hard times, especially the last two and a half years. But is the stories? What's the story going to be in the future? And what's the story going to be that makes a difference for my kids, for my family, for my friends, for some random person that's going to listen to your podcast or a story in the future? How's it going to impact them? So I think what I'm made up of is all the stories of my past and my future. Yeah. Yeah. Great answer. I like that. So what, what, when you said uh, the last couple of years, hard times, I mean, what hard times in business, finances, family, like what kind of things are you dealing with? Yes, yes, yes. And yes, man. At, uh, Started with uh, my past business. I did replacement windows for residential homes. I, like I, I said, I did about 25 million in sales in five years. And like they say, you know, in sales and in, in normal business, you can build a business for five years and it takes three months for it to go out. And that's what happened. I, I mismanaged some of my money. I, re, I actually reinvested too much into my company. One of the things I've always been good at is making money and, and building businesses, but then didn't know where to account for loss and a bad month and losing a a salesperson, all that kind of stuff. So I missed it. And uh, it started going down. And in the process of that, I I was trying to rebuild it, hiring the right people, getting some people, but didn't know if it was a day late, dollar short, ended up in a, you know, a a lawsuit with my franchisor and things I thought were going to go okay. And then uh, there's this one Thursday in December, it was the 14th of the 15th, 13th of December. I'll never forget 2018. That What's that? Yeah, 2018. I uh, went to dinner with my dad and mom and, my, and uh, took my kids out. We got sushi, this place in Midville. And my dad was not feeling well, but like flu, you know, but my dad was a tough dude, cop, you know, just a dude that would outwork anybody. I remember he was 58 years old, digging a ditch. And I, I quit after an hour and a half. He kept going for like six hours. So he goes back to the hotel. I fly out the next day because my birthday was on Monday. I go to Scottsdale to golf. Saturday, I get a call. Hey, you got to come home. Dad's sick. And an hour later, they're like, book your ticket. Now he's in critical condition. So I fly home and sit with my dad from Saturday 
until my birthday, 8.30 in the morning. On my birthday, my dad died. So I went to dinner with my dad on Thursday. My dad died on my birthday on Monday. Now I talked about the stories, like what am I made of? I'll never forget sitting at the window, looking out and thinking to myself, like my phone's now dinging. It's like 8.45, 9 o'clock, 9.30. Facebook messages, happy birthday. Hope it's the best day of your life. Ding, 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 ding. People don't have a clue. They had no idea. Nobody knew. And I thought to myself, okay, Jared, this is your story. It's either going to be the worst day of your life every year when you celebrate your birth, because that's the day your dad died, or you're going to make up a different story about this. And I made up in that exact moment, tears running down my face that every year from now on, I'm going to celebrate my dad as well as my birth and the man who gave me birth. So it's been that way for the last two years. So that happened, lost my business, filed bankruptcy, started a new business with the Miliari group, got into business with Ed Milet and some amazing human beings doing financial services, which is something I'm super passionate about is because I didn't have the financial literacy. I didn't have mentors to tell me, hey, don't go down there, go over here. You know, when I'm 41, when I was coming up, they called us flunks. They didn't call us entrepreneurs. They called us, you know, I mean, I had teachers literally tell me you're never going to make anything out of yourself because I pretty much flunked out of high school. I graduated with a 1.8 and I graduated late. My mom was a teacher. My dad was a cop. I didn't have somebody to say, hey, here's the railings. And so finally, I got into some businesses and and some partnerships through the Arate Syndicate, which Ed and Andy Frisella put together. And I, I got some mentors, you know, I got those bumpers on the bowling alley to keep me from going off the rails. And when, you know, lost that business, filed bankruptcy, started a new business, and then worked my way back up. And in that process, my wife of 13 years, we just, we've been dealing with a lot of stuff, but we just chose, hey, this isn't, this is, we're not on the same path. She didn't want to do the entrepreneurial journey anymore, which I don't blame her. It's hell. It's hell for somebody to go through that up and the down and the long hours and all of that. So, you know, last year in September, we, we decided we were going to get divorced. We went through that, which has been the best of a bad situation. We in live 2020? In What's that? 2020? Yeah. 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 Yep. yep. And then, uh, you know, healing that and trying to work out co-parenting. I've got a 10 and six year old daughter working out that. So it has the least impact on them now being back out in a, you know, dating in a relationship and, and also starting two new businesses and now launching this, this business cards and coffee SLC with Dan Fleischman and some other people. And here's the deal, man. So that's, so you asked me family money. Yeah. Bankruptcy, divorce, dad, dying, new relationship, kids moving, all of it. Yeah. I've been through it all in the last two years, but I also know that whatever you make up about something is the way it'll go. It can be the worst thing ever, or, Hey, I love this woman for 16 years. We created an amazing relationship together. We've got two amazing kids. And in the future, once everything's healed, we're going to be incredible friends. And I know things are going to be better. She's going to be happier and I'm going to be happier. That's the story I choose to run versus she's X, Y, Z. She's this she's not she's an incredible human i don't have to demonize her just because we're not together anymore yeah it's yeah. business you know yeah 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 so so since you got into with ed Milet and andy what was the change that you saw from late 2018 i guess it was when you got involved with them yeah it was um in the like, first like, rta syndicate so it was 2018 yeah and, and then you still involved with it or no um, I'm not in the syndicate anymore. They kind of disbanded the the main syndicate. I was in the first syndicate and then I didn't do re up to the second one. And for those of you that don't know, it's a, it's almost a six figure uh, group of people. It's not quite a mastermind, but it is a syndicate of, of people. There's 63 people in it. And really what I got out of that were the relationships and mentors. And in fact, it's how I met Dan. I, the first day I was in the syndicate, I didn't know who he was. I asked him, I said, Hey, I've got this thing. I just got out of a lawsuit with my franchise or I'm looking at suing him again. And Dan literally told me under no circumstances, get in a lawsuit unless you absolutely have to. And he probably saved me 200 K that day. Mm -hmm. Little things like that, like keep the bumpers on, yep. which is the number one thing I rec people always ask me, well, what would you do if you were 21 again? What would you do if you're 20 again? I would get a mentor that's like a couple levels above me and then always keep getting mentors yep. that are a couple levels above you. Yep. Yep. Look, I went through a situation in a business where we were probably about a million dollars, give or take, and didn't go legal because yep. of that exact thing. And I chose to take it and put it in my tank and then use it to fuel the success that we're having now and just totally just 
dominate and crush that person yes. in, in, yeah. in that with success. Because yes. I know it could have not just the money part, but it's the focus and resources and energy and time that go into that. And, you know, we grew up, like you said, like with kids, you know, we hear about people suing people and this and that all the time. And, but those are people that have shit tons of money or they're always broke one or the other. So yeah, um, it unfortunately gets advice. glamorized, but yeah. nobody look, I mean that old saying, the only people that win in a lawsuit are the attorneys is true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's certain situations, you know, um, for sure. not, not for the business stuff that we're talking about. I mean, it is what no. it is. You move on and just go crush them. So that, I thought that, you know, that's absolutely great advice. So, so during that time, um, you met some great relationships and then you started businesses. Now, what, what is the Miller group? Is that, is yeah, that so the Miliari group is a Miliari division. Group. Uh, yeah, is a, a division of WFG and Transamerica. So it's, it's a company that's really out. So mostly the 1% of the people that get wealthier, let's just face it. That's just what happens. And especially in the divide of, of wealth right now, but we found that it's not, it's not the money that divides people. It's the knowledge and the access similar to what we're talking about to mentors, knowledge and products and services. So our company is for that 99%. We want to level the playing field, give people the financial education that they need. Because let's face it, in high school, I don't know about you, but in high school, I didn't learn about mortgage interest. I mean, most people don't know. They talk about, oh, owning my house is better. Owning my house is better. Accurate if you keep the same mortgage for 30 years. But you're renting your house from your bank for the first five to seven years with interest. And on average, 90% of people move or refinance their house every five years. That's why they're constantly in that. Do that or not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You're green loans. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You know? no, I, I, uh, I run a large division for uh, mortgages, and yeah, exactly. That's right. I mean, people are refinancing like crazy right now. Yeah. And if they're smart about it, that's a great move. You're saving money. Then yeah. what do you do with that money? Okay, you save four hundred bucks, but where's that going? Is that now going to a new car or some BS? Or are you going to put that away for your retirement? Yep. Yep. So we like to educate people. In fact, my business partner Chris owns. Uh, a loan company as well. And we like to educate people when you lower that nut that you have every month, what do you do with it? And then also give people the access to the products and services. They're not usually available to people unless you're super wealthy. Yeah. So like what kind of things? So we've, we've got active money management. So you usually have to have a million dollars to get active access to these people. It's $25,000 since we have so many people on our platform. Uh, we teach people how to use because a lot of times life insurance has a negative connotation, but how to accurately build it and use it to grow wealth, to, to grow tax-free possible income, to be able to take your money out and use it to start businesses and do smart things. And, and also warn people about here's why it gets a bad name. Here's why people mess it up. Here's what happens. Um, but we, we do things like annuities, Ross, 401ks, active money management. We do, we do the spectrum. Gotcha. And that's your main focus right now? Um, it, it's kind of split right now, 50-50, building that. And I've got a team of uh, 50 active licensed agents across the United States. So I'm building that. And like I said, I'm a born and bred entrepreneur, man. And yeah, but uh, licensed also, agents doing that same thing for the familiarity group, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so yeah. the other part of my business is training and developing people with an entrepreneurial mindset, whether it's part-time or full-time. How do you build a business? How do you get a referral business going without spending thousands of dollars in marketing and advertising and targeting and ads? How do you get that, that going in a market? Because I've built multiple seven figure businesses and almost eight figure per year businesses with zero marketing and advertising. So I know how to, how to do that. So that's the other part of our business. Well, when, when people say that to me though, I'm, I'm like, well, what could you have done if you did marketing and advertising too? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my thing though, is how do you build it up to, because the problem is in, in my view, and maybe we disagree yeah. on this, but yeah. my, the problem is most people start a business and then they go borrow money or leverage or sell a bunch of their ownership to go market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they also don't know what they're doing in marketing yeah. and advertising. So they waste their money versus, hey, let's prove the concept first. Mm -hmm. Like I, I really do have a, a rule, like I'm opening a sports card shop and I've got a financial services agency. If I'm unwilling to sell what I offer to my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my friends, my family, then why am I going to go sell it to the public? Right. So I want proof of concept. Hey, this works. It makes a difference. I'm making some money. Boom. Now let's pour that money yep. into marketing and advertising. Yep. Let's use what we already created to do that. Because by all means, I mean. Yeah, I just, I, just wanted, I, I just wanted to make sure that was the case. I agree. A hundred percent. And most of these people in the entrepreneurial world, the problem is when they're getting into it, they think the answer 
is Facebook ads. Oh, the Facebook ads are gonna make me rich. I was in an Uber yesterday. This guy's like, oh, I can't wait to run the Facebook ads because the money's just gonna roll in. I'm like, no, you have to right, know what right. you're doing. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So give us a tip. You don't have to give out the whole playbook, but what's, that, what's one or two tips for people starting a business uh, that organically, I guess you could say marketing. Yeah. The, the, so I started my, my, I had a door to door window company and then I've got my financial services company and now the car shop and I've started them all the exact same way. If Mike, if you're my friend, I'm calling you and I'm going, Mike, I just started this new business, bro. I'm in financial services. I'm learning about it. I want to tell you about it. I want to show you what I'm doing because worst case scenario, maybe you can send me some referrals. And I don't try and get, like, if you're my friend, I'm not going to try and sell you, Mike. I'm not going to do that to my friends and family. I'm not going to be the guy that gets uninvited from Thanksgiving and Christmas because I'll never shut up about my product that you have to buy. And I'm in Utah, so I'm the capital of people that do that. Yeah. <laughs> but the number one tip I'd have if you're starting a business is get your Rolodex out, get your phone out, and go through every name in your phone and ask yourself, who in this phone, if they're at a party, and somebody's talking about my business. If somebody's talking about financial services, starting a business or sports cards. I need my name to come out of their mouth if they're in my circle. So go fix the number one problem to fix before you spend any money on advertising, in my opinion, is go make sure everybody you know knows what you're doing. And if they're at a party, we'll refer you. Yep. It's free. It's easy. You're going to get instant feedback. And you're going to be able to hone your craft with people that are not going to torture you. That's number one. And that's probably the biggest. It's how I ran. I, I literally had it's how I recruited and sold in my window company and the financial services and how I built a six figure profit in my first year in financial services, which as you know, in business is almost unheard of to build that much profit. Yeah. And the second one is what I went to back to earlier is get a mentor. Look, a book's not a mentor. A book's not going to hold you to account a get a mentor you trust and that is where you want to be and is a couple levels above you or way above you whatever that is find somebody reach out to them on instagram on clubhouse is a great place to meet people it's how you and i met um find somebody that's where you want to be but don't listen if you're going to follow somebody about money be careful about following them about relationships too just because you're following them about money do they have the relationship you want be careful following somebody about spirituality but then also following them about money. Like you got to find the people in these arenas that are where you want to be. And it's okay to have four or five people in those different arenas. Yeah, man. That's a great advice right there. First of all, the, just to unpack some of that. The first thing you're talking about is hitting your power base, but not trying to sell your power base, but getting out of obscurity with your power base and letting them know what you do. And uh, if they've forgotten about you, reminding them who you are, and what you do. That's it. Grant talks about it all the time, right? Nobody knows. Yeah, I've done a lot of business with you see as well. Yeah, Back yeah. The they don't know you. They don't flow you, right? And then, right. and then not only that, the reason people don't prospect or don't reach out to their database, the number one reason is they think that they have to sell them. Like you just yep. said, and that that's why people don't do it. So they misinterpret prospecting. Yeah. Right. So prospecting is just to simply get out of obscurity. Yeah. So it's thrown the top of their mind. And then what's the, 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 the back end of that, which really throws fuel in the fire, the little spark that you do with the prospecting is what the follow-up. Exactly. Right. So that's yep. basically, yeah, I, I agree hundred percent and uh, you're on the right track with that. No doubt about it, but people just don't do it. <laughs> that's, people that's don't it. do it and they get so attached. I, I think the other thing is like, let go, stop getting attached to that one sale. Stop getting attached to that one person buying or joining your team or doing the thing. Yep. Let go. Because I, I tell my whole team, if you have a hundred people, I'll take a hundred no sales. If yep. they'll send me three referrals in the next 12 months, because then I want those three people to send me three referrals in the next 12 months. Now, as long as I've got my follow-up game, I can sell, I can close. I'm good. Now yep. I can start dumping that rocket fuel. Like you talk about onto that fire and boom, now we can explode an already existing system. Yep. Yep. Love it. And then the other thing that we were talking about was having a mentor in one area and then following them all around as far as their whole life and then finding out that their marriage is not working or they, you know, they crashed and burned in relationships because they yep. were telling you that the things that it took to be successful, that you had to sacrifice that too. Yes. That's actually and, the next thing that I'm at a different point in my life. Now I'm 41. I've got a 10 and six year old. I just started over, built a couple new businesses a year ago and I've reevaluated. Look over the last 10 years, I, when my six year old was born, I didn't see her in the daylight for, I think, 
four months, three months, because I was starting a new business. And, and I'm talking Sundays as well. I'm unwilling to live life that way. So you got to ask yourself if you're in your 20s or 30s and you're like, look, I want hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever. Great. That might be what it takes. I don't know. I'm out to discover right now. Here's, here's the game I'm playing. How successful can I be never missing any of my daughter's things? Always sleeping eight hours and working out every day and never, I've gotten back into jujitsu after years. I heard your uh, interview with Dan Caldwell, um, but jujitsu, I, I started in 99 and stopped, but that, how successful can I be and still have all of that? Love it, man. That's my thing now. That's my I love jam. It. You know what happened to me? Uh, I love golf. I'm, I'm ah, a I mean, low yeah. handicap golfer and I used to play three times a week, was making money. Um, but when I got, I got back into doing some of the things that I'm doing now and I write, write the book rock fuel and some of the other things I did not schedule time in for golf. Yes. And I, and like for the last year, which is crazy to me, I never would have thought I would ever, I never would have thought I went through a stretch like this ever where I played like maybe five times last year. And wow. that's, that's crazy. And yeah. so this year, what I just did just recently, I, I, I did it. I probably did shit, man. 350 podcasts in the last 12 months with me, my show and inter interviews on other ones, because I knew I was having the book come out and I wanted to promote the shit out of it. Yep. But from here on out, man, I'm like, dude, I got I got to Fridays are my quiet day, creativity mm. and golf. If it's Love nice it. weather. And I'm going to focus getting back in there because I just told my wife this morning, man, I'm like, dude, I'm not having fun. Like mm -hmm. I'm having fun at times, but not enough. Like I should be having fun all the time. Like right now I'm having fun because I yeah. intentionally told myself this morning, today's the day I'm going to go forward and I'm going to have fun. No matter yeah. what happens, I'm going to smile. I'm going to have a good time because I'm not doing that. I was grinding. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but with depending on what's going on, I get in this, this zone where I'm just like so intense yes. and I forget to smile and have a fun laugh, man. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. And I, I, my kids were the ones paying the price, man. I Exactly, man. I started asking myself the question because, you know, I've got, I'm an entrepreneur. I know that I can make a lot of money and I have, I've made millions of dollars per year. I've lost millions of dollars. And when I say made, I mean, I actually put in my pocket millions of dollars reinvested in companies, but I've just started looking at, at what cost. And now I ask myself when I'm 80, am I going to be proud of the decision I made to miss my daughter's thing to go make some extra money? Am I going to be glad that I did that? And if the answer is no, I don't do it. Yeah. The answer is yeah. Yes. Also on the flip side, if I didn't explore my entrepreneurial journey and I just got a job for me personally, and I didn't go hustle and grind and create, I would also regret that. I, if I only spent time with my kids, I'd be like, man, you should have gone and lived for yourself, man. You should have yeah. explored. Yeah. You should have dated. You should have gone on date night and been okay getting a babysitter from time to time. You should have gotten away and taken a trip without the kids from time to time. So there's that thing for me personally, and this is self-awareness of, I'm at, I'm 41 now looking again, newly, what am I going to regret when I'm 80? And I'm going to try and minimize those things as much as possible, man. By the any way, cha any, any chance, any chance you can rekindle with the wife and, and get back with her? I mean, no, uh, no interest in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I've moved on, she's moved on and look, here's the thing. There's just a lot of stuff for us that we looked at newly and, chose like, look, we're not on the same not alignment. Anymore. Right. I mean, we were 23 when we met. Right. And you know, the entrepreneur journey is really rough. And then on the flip side, there's some stuff that for me was rough as well. And when we've just really told the damn truth about it was okay, we can spend the next 40 years working on this and kind of selling out on our souls, or we can actually complete this and move on. Yeah. You know, when my wife and I got married, we didn't say for better or for worse forever. We said, our marriage is for the highest and best expression of us as a human being. And if that's ever not the case, we're not going to be married anymore. Yeah. I was in our vows mm -hmm. and it just so happened that wasn't the case anymore. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, if you're not supported, here's what I just, I just read something recently. I don't even know where I got it from, but they said, check your circle and your circle includes your spouse, includes your friends, includes your, you know, partners, but check it your circle starts there. Right. Yeah. 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 You got to check your circle, make sure they're encouraging you, lifting you up, supporting you in alignment with you, this and that. If not, if you don't have that, it's not a circle. You have yeah. a cave. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, and I think mostly for, for, to be fair, she had the experience of like, 
I picture somebody holding onto a rope on the back of like a Formula One car driving through the desert, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like that's kind of what it's like being in a relationship with an entrepreneur. And she, she, look, it's not fair to her to keep doing that. I went broke twice in our relationship, you know, and, and she values security. And then there were other things that we were up to that, you know, we, we get along. I mean, she, I'm in, I, I live in a townhome now. She lives in the apartment complex, two buildings over. It's not yeah. like, it's not like this, but I've also, you know, to, to your partner thing, I've, I'm actually seeing somebody and I've known her for 17 years and I've had the experience speaking of rocket fuel, that a relationship where that we're running together, we're sprinting together and it has poured rocket fuel on what I'm capable of. I've yeah. like 75 hard speaking of Andy for I finished it yesterday. I've tried five times in three years, never finished it. Um, starting two businesses, this last one in 60 days raised a half a million in capital with business partnerships, getting it off the ground. And I have the experience that that partnership that we're running together and going the same direction is rocket fuel for everything we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Alignment, man. It's called yeah. alignment. Yeah. It makes all the difference in the world. So how can my audience get in touch with you, Jared? Do you have any questions or want to engage with you? Man, one of the, my favorite things is teaching. So um, I do actually want to encourage your audience if they have questions, concerns, you said, not to give away the whole playbook, I'll literally open my playbook to any human being. Um, is I'm on Clubhouse, Jared Bringhurst, Instagram, Jay Bringhurst. Reach out, DM me, shoot me a message, and I'm happy to help any way I can with the things that I know about. Cool, cool, cool. All right, final question. What does that rocket fuel law mean to you? You just mentioned a little bit of it there, but what, what, is, what does yeah. it mean to you in your life and going forward in your life with, with what your plans are? Yeah, I think the rocket fuel law really, for me, means consciously pouring the gas on the things you're committed to fulfilling in life because here's the thing rocket fuel can also be detrimental if you pour rocket fuel on negativity on poison on gossip it will also destroy so it's hey what do i want to feed today what do i want to pour that rocket fuel on that will explode and focusing on that and bringing that into your life whether it's a job whether it's love whether it's compassion, generosity, business, entrepreneurship, money. That's what it means to me is being conscious about where I'm putting my attention to pour the rocket fuel on. Love it. Love it, man. Great words. Thanks for being on the show, Jared. Appreciate you, man. Looking forward to building a relationship with you here in the future. Maybe we could do some things together, but um, I'm rooting for you no matter what, brother. Thanks, man. Let's get a golf round in. All right. Sounds good, man. That sounds good. Thanks for coming on. You guys have been listening to the What Are You Made Of podcast with your boy, Mike C-Rock, the unstoppable Mike C-Rock. And I would say, yeah, unstoppable Jared Bringhurst. He falls into the category now. We heard his story. Go support him. Reach out to him. Let him know you heard him here on the What Are You Made Of podcast. Until next time, guys, be unstoppable. 